Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Welcome to everyone as we gather together uh, in joy to celebrate the marriage of, of these two, of Matt and Lisa. I know many of you are here at St. Anne's for the first time. A special word of welcome. My name is Father David Marstall. I'm the pastor here. It's been a great joy to get to know these two and to work with them, preparing them not just for today, but for a life of holy marriage. We all gather together in this celebration. We've come rejoicing into this house of the Lord for this celebration. Brothers and sisters, we now stand with Matt and Lisa on the day they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance, and so let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. Let's listen attentively with them to the Word of God that speaks to us today. And then with Holy Church, we humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord for this couple, His servants, that He lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Let us pray. Be attentive to your prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these, your servants, Matt and Lisa, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And you may be seated as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created him. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. But see, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness. The The earth earth is full full of the the goodness goodness of of the the Lord. Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our hope and our shield. For in him our hearts rejoice, in his holy name we trust. The earth earth is is full full of the goodness goodness of of the Lord. Lord. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. The earth earth is is full full of of the the goodness of the Lord. Lord. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things <clears throat> we conquer overwhelming <clears throat> overwhelmingly through him who loved us, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And you may be seated. You know, I imagine if most people sat down to go through the, the Gospels, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and pick out those passages that would be most suited for a wedding, probably most people wouldn't pick this one. Not that it's like bad or seems like contrary to marriage or anything like that, but it, it doesn't use the word marriage, for one thing. Most people would probably start with passages like the wedding at Cana, when Jesus is there, celebrating a wedding with a couple, or when he talks about the, the permanence of marriage and, and, um, and that he uh, does not permit divorce. Um, probably we would start with, with one of those, and yet this passage is, is one of the ones that the church recommends and the one that these two have chosen to listen to this day. And it does kind of prompt us to ask, the, to ask the question, well, why? Why this reading? Why, why really, why are we here? You know, this place uh, is a pretty good place to take photos. You guys probably took some nice photos before the wedding. You might get some nice ones afterwards. I mean, the, you know, it photographs pretty well. The light's nice, but that's not why we're here. Matt and Lisa, for a long time, they've been, they've been good to each other. And they've been good for each other. Um, they've helped each other to be able to grow. They've supported each other through some difficulties. They have a lot to celebrate. That's not why we're here either. And we're not here to, to celebrate those things of the past, even as good as they may be. Uh, we're here... Uh, because they want to do something special. And in a little bit, they're going to make a commitment to each other, a very special commitment to each other, a permanent binding commitment to each other. 
But as they do that, they're also going to make a commitment to our Lord, a commitment to our Lord to do what he calls all of his disciples to do. You know, one of the reasons why um, why they don't just kind of go off someplace alone or, or even just kind of meet with me over in my office or something like that to get married is because marriage is intended to be a, a public thing, a visible sign, something that doesn't just change these two, but changes the world around them as well. As they are called to be salt of the earth, to be a light to the world, something that, that changes the world, that makes everything around it different. When you add salt to your food, it makes the food taste different. It's not like other ingredients. You don't just notice the salt unless you're like Kevin who just dumps the salt shaker into his mouth at dinner last night. But, uh, but normally when you use salt the right way, it, it makes the food around it taste different, taste better. You don't notice the salt so much as you notice everything else. Likewise, the light, we don't spend all of our time just staring at the light bulbs, but rather the light allows us to see everything around us. It makes everything around different. It makes everything around better. That is what Jesus calls his disciples to do, to recognize his love, to receive his love, and to allow that love to change their lives in a way that changes the world. Matt and Lisa are here because they recognize that God has called them to that, and they're ready to answer that call. Uh, to live a life of, of love, to live a life of dedication, to live a life of devotion and fidelity, that will spill over, that will be a blessing for all those around them. And that's why it is appropriate that we all be here with them today to, sell, to, to share in this celebration. St. Paul asked the question in our second reading today, what can separate us from the love of God? And he lists all of these things that, that could be obstacles to, to happiness in life. All of these things that could be obstacles to a good life, but, but St. Paul recognizes, as, as disciples of Jesus recognize, that those things are not obstacles to our Lord. They're not obstacles to our Lord. And his love is capable of overcoming all of them. Matt and Lisa are here because they want to have that kind of a love for one another, a love that is able to persevere through obstacles, overcome obstacles, and endure obstacles. You will have obstacles. Life doesn't get easy because you get married. In fact, in many ways, it gets harder. Um, that's part of it, and that's part of the beauty of it. You know, and, and by experiencing those obstacles together with that the greater devotion, you will know in a greater way, in a clearer way, in a more profound way, the love that God has for you. He who has loved you through the greatest of obstacles, our own sinfulness. He who loved you even when it meant going to the cross. He who has decided, chosen, committed himself to loving you to the end. You'll understand all the better what that means as you live that same kind of love for one another. Matt and Lisa, are you ready to live that kind of love, the love that will persevere through obstacles, a love that will mirror the love of Christ and allow you to experience what it is like to love like God loves? Then I invite you to stand and to profess your love for one another. Dearly beloved, you have come together into this house of the church so that in the, in the presence of the church's minister and this community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism so that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Matt and Lisa, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared to follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other, 
for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Then since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless these rings which you give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Please stand as we present our petitions to our Heavenly Father. And after each petition, please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church and all people of faith throughout the world, may our faith in the love God has for us be expressed in our love for one another. <clears throat> we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. For peace in our world, may all lands that suffer violence and injustice find peace and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the poor, the homeless, and for those who are unemployed, may our care and concern for those in need be a sign of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers for the protection and sanctity of human life from conception until natural death. May all people be treated with the dignity they deserve as God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those preparing for marriage, may they grow in wisdom and grace and reflect God's love to all around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Matthew and Lisa, who began their married life together this day, may they experience the love of God, the support of family and friends, and the blessings of children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. For all those who have died, especially the relatives and friends of Matthew and Lisa, and of all present for this wedding, may they enjoy perfect happiness and total fulfillment in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And now let us humbly invoke God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness 
he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony. Go ahead and kneel down. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed a man and a woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ in his church, O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your, by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Lisa and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you. May these, your servants, hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children and grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God, and I am pleased and honored to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Matthew Marins.